So a relaxed performance is a performance that a, pre a presentation of a theatre show that is being adapted or amended to make it more accessible and more welcoming for audiences that might have disability, uh, autism, learning disorders. It's actually there to kind of welcome anybody who might be experiencing levels of anxiety about coming to the theatre. So each year we do run audio described performances for visually impaired children. Expanding that to children with all sorts of disabilities including autism has been a natural progression for us and something that I'm really excited to be working with the Arts Centre on this year. So this performance today is part of a broader pilot program that we're running at Arts Centre Melbourne at the moment around disability access. We were very fortunate to get some quite generous gifts from a couple of philanthropists, the Lorenzo and Pamela Galley Foundation and the Cassandra Gantner Foundation, and that's allowed us to do a number of initiatives over the next year or so around how we look at programming more inclusively here. Well, the first thing that I did was approach Arts Access Victoria. I figured we needed to talk to people who work in this space. What we did was put together a focus group. We went to VO and we actually watched a rehearsal, so we all understood what the work was we're talking about, and then sat around for an hour or so afterwards and talked about how we would need to adapt the work, what we need to do as a venue to, to be more accessible. And it was a very animated and just you know, exciting discussion. And what became really apparent to me was that everybody there had a different perspective on this, this kind of thing, but we were all there for the common goal and we're very, very excited about the fact that it was happening. We, we sort of had to come out and go, OK, what can we do in the time that we've got and what can we do taking on board some of those suggestions? So some of those suggestions were to preempt some action that may happen, to have the narration coming through as well, to have the house lights up, we've cut a strobe effect, so we've just softened the performance there as well. Sequentially the performance still runs as it is and when we get to anything that that we felt might have been intimidating, we actually stop the action, stop the music, get the performers out on stage and demonstrate the activity and say this will happen at some point and over to the next sequence. For example, our witch gets pushed into the oven and there's a few flashing lights at that point. So what we'll do is actually show that part of it. The actor will come back out, wave, yes, he's all okay, and then we'll actually get on with the scene and see it in its magical form. We need to provide a, a breakout space, like a quiet room, for people who may need to get out of the auditorium if they're being overwhelmed. We also need to prepare a lot of resource materials in advance for what we call a visual story, which um, provides images of the venue, of, the, of where people are coming to, of characters in the show, a bit about the story, about what to expect. Just uh, some tools, really, about how people can prepare to come if they're anxious about not knowing what they're coming to. It's going to be really lovely on the back of today, on the audience's reactions, on conversations we'll have with parents, teachers of the the students coming in today and look at what we can do in the future to be able to adapt our performances. We are about accessibility at Victorian Opera. It's really exciting to be the first company in Melbourne to do this, particularly in, in conjunction with the Arts Centre. We're, we're really proud of it. It's hard to find places to be able to take your child that you can enjoy as a family. So something like this is absolutely perfect. A, a lot of our kids would never ever have an opportunity to come to something like this. In fact, I'd probably say most of them. I have always as a parent been worried to take Ben to like a production. But this has been a fantastic launching pad for us because um, I know now that Ben can cope. I really helped having the materials in advance, the visuals. We could sort of make a chronological, you know, visual map of what they were going to do and it makes it much less anxiety provoking for them. I felt really proud that Ben could really engage and when it finished he stood up and said bravo and like I didn't even know that he knew that word. Yeah, if we could have something like this once a term, love it, really nice, yeah. <laughs> I feel pretty good. I've got to say, it, it, uh, it went really well. Fantastic. I think we feel really pleased with this morning's um, performers. The, the audience loved it. This morning, walking into the foyer and then down in the theatre was one of those days that um, I was reminded this is why I'm doing the work that I'm doing. It was fantastic to see the diversity of people in the foyer and, and then in the performance. People enjoying opera who we don't ordinarily see. So that was just a magic moment. Any inclusive production means that you're getting the most diverse audience that you can. You're um, making it as accessible and welcoming for everybody. 
So families can bring their child with autism. Siblings can come together. School friends can come together and enjoy what the rest of us take for granted. For us, this whole disability pilot that we're doing at the moment is about trialling stuff, exploring this space, seeing what works, what doesn't work, talking to the sector and just seeing if we can find a way of embedding what we learn about this into our broader programming strategies. And hopefully you'll see more of this type of performance, not just from us at Victorian Opera and the Arts Centre, but hopefully all around Melbourne and across the industry. Thank you.